Sir Keir Starmer has said that boys should receive lessons in school on how to behave towards girls. Now, the Labour leader says that it would help reduce sexual violence and harassment, but I wonder whether or not this is yet another example of teachers trying to just play the role of the parents. I am joined now by author Ella Whelan and the assistant, the assistant editor of Prospect magazine, Emily Law. For both of you, thank you very much. Uh, Ella, I will start with you, if that's all right. Do you think that this is an example of teachers trying to play parents? Well, perhaps. Um, I mean, the way in which we talk to kids about, young people about sex, is, comes from various forms of facts. You know, they very often, as much as they don't listen to their teachers, they don't listen to their parents either. Oh. It's usually something they figure out themselves, um, as awful as that sounds, by kind of trial and error. But I think mm. the, pro the biggest problem of this is that, you know, there's a complete misunderstanding of the reasons why men, you know, certain men still do bad things to women from the very serious like rape and assault to the sort of less serious but annoying like um, sexist comments. Mm. It's not because they've missed out on a sex and relationships educational class. It's they know very well what they're doing is wrong um, and they're doing it in spite of it being wrong. So I think what we're in danger of doing is completely missing the point about how to fight for women's freedom and against sexism and instead just, uh, you know, I think giving young boys yet another complex, because what we're saying is you're very, very bad, awful little creatures that we have to train out of being bad, otherwise you'll harm girls. And I, I just don't know anyone sensible who thinks that's genuinely true. Yeah, Emily, how would you respond to that now? Uh, Emily Lawford, assistant editor of, of Prospect magazine. So the idea that teachers might essentially be telling all boys just not to sexually assault girls and you know, almost, I suppose, infantilising them like that? I don't really think infantilising is correct. I mean, almost 80% of girls say sexual assault happens regularly in their schools. That's a huge problem. I think, do I think teachers telling them don't do that is going to solve it completely? Obviously not. But I don't, I also don't think boys are malevolent. I think education is definitely part of it. I think there are issues around consent that boys don't know. Grey areas, things like when someone's too drunk, when there's pressure. I do think reinforcement education will help in those areas. Do I think it will stamp out completely? Definitely not. I don't think it's, I, you know, I don't think people should be telling boys, oh, your masculinity is inherently toxic or anything like that. But clearly, I mean, there's a huge problem. I don't want, the idea of trial and error, I don't want girls to be collateral damage and boys growing up. I don't want what should be informative sexual experiences, what should be good or if not, you know, for both people, I don't want that to be traumatizing for girls. And I don't think boys are going to become traumatized by a lesson that's part of normal sex ed. Okay. I don't think a lesson or two, it would actually cause damage to boys. Go on, Ella. Well, I just don't, I mean, the idea that trial and error is traumatizing is I think part of the problem here because, you know, it, it, Again, you're suggesting that what happens when a young or a young man and woman of the consensual age um, get together and try and get it on is that boys inherently do something really, really bad and and the young woman suffers for it. And in actual fact, what mostly happens is that the two of them fumble along and maybe, you know, in the morning there are some regrets. Um, maybe you have a bad date or something like that and you learn from the next one. But there's this sort of suggestion that, that there is a malevolence here. And in actual fact, fact you know girls make mistakes boys make mistakes and the way we learn is you know about social norms is always informally it's not through being lectured to either by your parents or by teachers and the way in which we give boys in particular guidance um, and girls in how to have their kind of their relationships in privacy I think is really by being as informal about it as we can because the more you set down rules you know the idea of teaching consent is such, a, is, is such a nonsense to me because in actual fact, you have the whole notion of consent is that it's flexible, it changes. Mm. You can't set down rules for it. You certainly can't sign a contract for it. It has to happen in the moment. And I think we're just given, you just talked about celibacy. I mean, Christ, yeah. if I was a young person today, I'd find it very, very hard to engage in sexual right. relationships because there seems to be so many tick boxes to check. Yeah, Emily, I suppose there is a potential, is there not, for it to be skewed now? I suppose a lot of women, um, a lot of teachers, sorry, most teachers are women, from what I understand it, and whether or not they would necessarily always be best placed to advise boys, would it potentially come from a position of bias, maybe? I don't know. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Do you think this is really the best way that, that, that boys could learn about it? Should it not maybe just be 
from their own mother, potentially? I would also very much encourage parents to speak to their children. I think if schools are having to step in, that's having to step in, that's clearly because parents maybe aren't having those conversations. And, you know, for girls, if it is a school's responsibility as well. In mm. terms of bias, I mean, clearly it's so far the other way right now. You know, all teachers are reporting widespread sexual harassment. Girls are reporting it. If you read the testimonies on Everyone's Invited two years ago, there was some really mm. harrowing stuff. And I mean, uh, yeah, being assaulted by a, by a young person when you're a young person is traumatizing. I can, I, I really stand by that. And that is happening. It's girls are speaking out about how it's happening. I don't think, um, but I mean, I would encourage if you think men should ha have some of those conversations, male teachers, I mm. would support that. I, I think, and I also think as well, the girls should have these conversations in sex ed as well and be taught how to respect boys. I, I'm not saying it's entirely one way. And I don't think, I think it's important to be able to do it in a respectful way that encourages people to try things. Right. Of course, it's not always black and white. And I certainly don't want to put a bunch more young boys in young offenders institutions. That is like the opposite of what I want. Mm. I think it should be totally like, okay. well, almost totally non-punitive and encouraging for both sides.